See how it's kind of these wavy lines? Normally, if you were trolling, it looked like a straight line and it drop off real quick because these brush piles, again, are only four or five, maybe six feet long at the, at the longest. Welcome back to another episode in the Garmin Echo Map 93SV UHD2 series. So now that we've covered overall screen settings and 2D sonar screen settings, let's dive into clear view or down view, how it works, what are the best settings for this screen, and most importantly, what do fish look like with clear view? This comes from your transducer, which can either be mounted on the transom of your boat or the trolling motor. This transducer sends a sonar wave typically in three different frequencies, 455, 800, or 1.1 or 1.2 megahertz, to the bottom of the lake. The sonar wave hits the bottom of the lake and moves back towards the transducer. Then your graph interprets the time that it took from that sonar wave to hit the bottom of the lake and return to the transducer coming up with a depth. So we have a basic understanding of how the sonar wave actually creates a depth image. Let's talk about what you're actually seeing on your screen. On the screen, you're gonna see a blacked out area above a dark gold area. Now the dark gold area depends on what color palette you have, which I'll discuss here in the settings section of the video. But the blacked out area of the screen shows the entire water column from the surface of the water all the way to the lake bottom. The lake bottom is illustrated by the dark gold and anything on the lake bottom is illustrated by dark gold, either bumps or shadows, which we're gonna talk about later. Now the transducer, which is located at the top right of the screen, will ping off the lake bottom and other objects to create different depths and different images. This data is gonna move from right to left across the screen, which creates historical data. Now any image on the very right side of the screen will show up directly below the boat. As the image moves from right to left of the screen, the image is considered further behind the transducer only if the boat is moving. If you're sitting still in the water, the image will still move from right to left across the screen. However, you will notice that the images become more elongated and almost become straight lines, similar to what we saw in the 2D sonar video. This is because a transducer sends and receives the sonar beam. Because the boat's not moving, it's getting the same exact data creating a straight or elongated line. All right, very similar to any other screen setup. If you click on the, uh, the three little buttons down here, it's gonna pull up a menu. And it's gonna give you our contrast, which again, I just leave it at default. The settings out of this unit, right out of the box, are phenomenal. You really don't have to change much. Um, brightness, I have this set at auto low and will auto adjust to, to what I need. Again, I don't really touch it. Um, now your frequency, you got three frequency options similar to um, any type of side imaging or side view that this unit has. 455, 810, and 1.07 megahertz. Now, when it comes to down view, remember I said that this is a beam, not a cone angle. So as you go down in the number of, of frequencies, so your 455, it's actually going to be a little bit wider of a beam. It's going to show you a little bit more left and right. Um, you're going to lose clarity because what your unit is trying to do is trying to gather data uh, from the lake bottom or the river bottom and try to put it into this 9-inch screen so there's only so many pixels that this unit has so you as you go up in frequency typically most people leave it on whoops leave it on this uh, 1.07 megahertz your ultra hd it's going to be a narrower beam but your image is going to be pretty crisp and clear i'm not saying that the 455 isn't valuable uh, you can play around with it it's going to give you a little bit wider of a beam angle or beam width when you're looking left and right at the bottom but I typically just use it UHD. Uh, I typically just run the UHD, the 1.07 megahertz. It's gonna give a crisp, clear image of the bottom. And if you need to view left and right, we can always go to our side view screen. And again, we have the zoom function. Now, unlike 2D sonar, when you click on the zoom, 2D sonar, you just kind of zoomed into the bottom five feet. This actually gives you a zoom box. And there's two ways to do this. Now you can see I got some fish down here and it just gives me uh, kind of a magnifying glass of what I'm looking at. You can actually pinch the screen and it'll zoom in a little bit further. And if you can pinch it all the way and it'll turn it off. And if you ever just want to 
quick pull up a box. You can just kind of pinch the screen like you're on Google Maps and just kind of scrolling around. And there's a fish on the bottom right there. Oops, let's see if we can get it. It's going to come into view right here. Yep. Um, you can also turn the zoom on, click these three buttons that are next to it. Let's see if we got that. These three buttons here. And it'll say, what mode do you want? It'll give you a, a, a magnify mode, which we want here. It'll give you a bottom lock, which will zoom into the bottom. And we can set what we want as far as uh, like how far zoomed in we want to be. But I typically like magnify, especially since I'm fishing for crappie. If I run into a, a brush pile or something and I want to zoom in, or if I find a tree, I want to zoom in and see if there's actually some fish stacked on it. That magnify option is by far the best bet to really figure out if there's fish on a piece of cover. Um, we have our range. Typically I leave this on auto because I don't normally fish deeper than about 30 feet. If you fish deeper than 30 feet, you might want to set your manual settings to something different. Uh, but I usually just leave it on auto because most of the lakes and rivers I fish are usually shallower than 30 feet, 40 foot at the most. Uh, but if you fish some of the big reservoir systems and you're fishing 50, 60 feet of water or deeper, set, you might want to manually set your, your range. Uh, you can turn your trans, the transducer on and off. You know, if you're, you're not really using it, you're up there fishing, you can actually turn, turn things off. And then we can go to our clear view setup. Now this will give us our menu. And again, we got our scroll, uh, we got our scroll speed. Now again, the top unit, let's go back. So again, here we have uh, a list of our clear view setup menus. The top one is our scroll speed. So similar to our 2D sonar, um, this basically just how fast the unit delivers data from right to left across the screen. So if I slow this all the way down to one, it's gonna just crawl across the screen, very slow paced from right to left. If I crank this all the way up to 10, you can see that thing is really starting to move across the screen. I typically just leave it on default. It works for me. Play around with it. Whatever is most comfortable for you. You just wanna be confident in what you're seeing uh, on both 2D sonar, down view, and your side view screens. Uh, so play around with some of these settings. Again, typically right out of the box, you shouldn't have to do too much to it. Um, so the next thing we have is our noise reject. Now, typically I leave this off, your interference. Um, TVG set to medium. Again, if, if you're not fishing in super turbulent water, so if you're fishing in a lot of current system, you might have to adjust some of this stuff uh, by turning on the interference to maybe a low or medium. Uh, or if you're fishing around a lot of boats, you know, maybe you're fishing a bridge during the winter time, some of these big reservoir systems for crappie, there's a lot of boats out there and you're, you're getting a little bit of interference. Typically, I'd say if you're fishing around a lot of boats or you're fishing in super turbulent water, uh, you're fishing a river system or a reservoir system that's really pulling current, there's a lot of sediment, you can adjust some of these settings to help clear up that image for you. Uh, the next is our appearance. And again, this is a color scheme. I use the amber right out of the box, the default color scheme setting. I prefer it, but if you wanna change up to different patterns, go ahead. Uh, what, again, the goal is to make sure you are comfortable with what you are seeing on the lake bottom or the river bottom. Uh, you overlay data. Right now in the top left corner of my screen here, you see I got the depth, I got uh, water temperature, my speed, my battery power voltage, and then the time of day. You can turn all this stuff on and off just by clicking it and saying show, don't show, you know, whatever you want to see. One of the most common questions I get about down imaging or just sonar in general is how far away an object is once you see it on your screen. Now this can be a little bit tricky because you need to know the speed and the direction your boat is going to determine the exact distance of the object. The best way that I know how to actually find the position is to use a waypoint. After marking the waypoint on your graph, simply by going over it with your toggle key or if you got a touch screen, tapping on the image, create the waypoint. You're gonna circle back slowly, either idle over it with your outboard or with your trolling motor if you're fishing a brush pile in this case, which is what we're trying to do here. Try not to scare the fish. And then you're gonna throw a buoy marker on, in this case, the brush pile. Now typically in this situation, it is a benefit to have the transducer on a trolling motor as well as a transom. 
because you can quietly idle over the brush pile near your buoy marker that you just threw out to get a more accurate reading of where you are at in relation to the brush pile. Once that brush pile starts showing up on the very far right side of the screen, that's how you know you're directly over the top of it. And you can adjust your buoy marker to get a more accurate setting so that you can cast your jig over the top and catch the crappie. So here's, here's what your 2D sonar would look like on the same setup. See how it's all kind of blurred in with red? Now you can definitely tell something's there, but when we go to our down imaging screen, you can see the individual fish, and those are a ton of crappie stacked up on that brush pile. I'm gonna screenshot that again for you. And that is the main key why you use down imaging sonar versus 2D sonar. So if you have a unit that has both down imaging and 2D, you can use them side by side, kind of like I have them here. Now this unit has side imaging, so I also have side imaging hooked up, but you could have a screen like this, and you can see there's definitely something down there and then you can definitely tell the high definition of these are fish, those are the brush pile. And uh, yeah, there's definitely a ton of fish down there. So that's gonna wrap it up for the clear view video. The next video, we're gonna be talking about side view, the settings, how to use it, how it works, and most importantly, how to find fish. Appreciate you watching the video. If you got any comments or questions, you can post them in the comment section below, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I always appreciate hearing from you. Good luck on the water this year. Hopefully you're out there catching a ton of fish.